welcome back to another vlog. This is My Hero Academia Season 1, Episodes 3 and 4. I have no idea what the titles are. Um, this is a commissioned vlog for Benny Blue. Thanks for backing, Benny. So, this did not go where I was expecting at all. Uh, everything I talked about last time was kind of predicated on the assumption that uh, Midoriya is his name, I think? Uh, the main character. Let's go with Midoriya. Uh, Midoriya is, would not have a quirk. Like, ever. You know? That we would be following a character who is unpowered in a world of powered people, and how he becomes a hero anyway. That's not the way they're going. Um, they're going with a very different power. Um, All for One is an interesting concept. I'm a little surprised that uh, All Might appears to still have his power after giving it to um, Midoriya. I'm not 100% clear on how that works, but I thought the idea was that the power gets passed from person to person, growing each time, and so it would become... it would leave All Might as it entered... Uh, Midoriya, but maybe it's just, like, multiple people can't have it at once, or it'll get... Because I noticed that when Midoriya was doing his thing, All Might was shown as, uh, in his unpowered form. Or maybe it's more of, uh, you know, he... As he grows stronger, as Midoriya grows stronger, All Might's power will fade? Or maybe it just gets past, like, each person can just choose a successor who gets that power. Um, but I like the concept more, and it seemed to be what he was saying, of a power that is shared and grows from that sharing. Um, which is very in keeping with Shonen themes. You know, if shonen anime has a unifying theme, it is drawing power from your friends and allies. Um, you know, it's in basically everything. Uh, that, you know, stronger together. Uh, which is a good theme for what is ultimately, you know, remember, shonen is aimed at like, middle schoolish aged boys, shonen and shoujo together comprise approximately what we refer to as YA in um, the West, uh, in terms of like shonen and shoujo manga, uh, since YA is a literature term, that's kind of approximately what it matches up to, while, um, although I think shonen is actually slightly younger. Uh, or at least it starts slightly younger. It may end around the same age, or even slightly older. Uh, but yeah, it's the rough equivalent to, like, a PG or TV PG or YA, anything like that. Uh, although, it's closer to YA in the sense that YA behaves more like a genre, as opposed to, like, an age rating, the way PG and TV PG are. Uh, but, regardless, uh, it's, it's a good, you know, pro-social or whatever, uh, core message. It's just, it's interesting that there is a unifying theme to shonen, but it's really hard to find shonen that don't share in that. Uh, even something like Evangelion, which is... It uses a lot of shonen stuff, even though it isn't really aimed at kids. Um, it's still built like a shonen series, um, and very much resembles one, especially early on. Uh, it's... Even something like that, like, it's not so much stronger together as weaker apart. The character's inability to come together. You could even see uh, instrumentality as a kind of 
really dark take on this idea of stronger together. Uh, regardless, we're talking about My Hero Academia. Uh, we got introduced to a couple new characters in the uh, second of these two episodes. Episode, well, no, actually, no, I take that back. It was at the begin. It was near the end of episode three that we were introduced to a couple of new characters. Uh, the blue-haired boy that seems to be kind of a stick up his ass, um, and the uh, brown-haired girl who is being positioned as someone who is actually friendly to him, his own age, which is not really something we see in prior episodes. Um, she's probably going to be set up as a love interest, but as always, I'd be more interested if she wasn't, because with very rare exceptions, straight romance is boring. Um, and... Frankly, Shonen tends not to handle it well. But, regardless, um, I like her. I like her power. It appears to be telekinetic control of things after she touches them. Like, she has to touch something, and then she can control it telekinetically until she releases it. Um, which is neat. It's both a neat power and an unusual limitation on that power that I haven't seen before. Uh, so it's a it's a cool combination, uh, and other than that, she seems like a generally like sweet girl. Uh, we haven't really seen much of her. We don't really have a name, uh, but she definitely comes across better than uh, blue hair stick of his ass or blonde jerk ass. Um, Midoriya is. Like I said, not going in the direction I expected. Even after they introduced the training thing, I was still wondering right up until he act until his arm started to glow. I was seriously wondering if he was if it was like a whole, you know, Dumbo magic feather kind of a thing. Um, that uh all Might was essentially tricking him into building up his physical strength and his confidence so that he would stand a chance in the test even without a quirk. Um, but nope, it was legit. He's actually being granted a power. Uh, one that takes a nasty physical toll on him, much like it seems to do for All Might, but even nastier on Midoriya, but that's apparently because his body isn't used to it yet, and that will change with time. Um, it was pretty heavily telegraphed even before they started talking about it. From the minute they said there was a zero-point thing, uh, it was pretty clear that it was a thing, that there was some way in which defeating that was actually secretly the key to victory. Because that's how this kind of thing just works in shows. Um, I like that they're continuing with the theme, that it wasn't just they're lying and it's really worth a thousand points. Um, I like that they're continuing the theme that a hero's real job is not to defeat enemies, but to rescue people. Um, and that the core of the hero... This, this was interesting to me, because I think... Most superhero stuff would position courage or strength or, you know, helping people as the primary traits of a hero, um, depending on how idealistic it is. I've never seen anything before that po posits self-sacrifice as the key feature. Um, that's an interesting take on it. Because that's not quite the same thing as helping people. Um, that's being willing to suffer for the sake of others. And that's, that's very different. I mean, for example, Superman doesn't suffer much. Uh, some Western heroes suffer a lot, certainly. Um, Spider-Man's life is, uh, at least for the Peter Parker version, I don't actually know the other ones that 
well. I like what I've seen of Miles Morales a lot, but I haven't actually seen that much. Um, Peter Parker's life is unending misery. Uh, Marvel heroes in general tend to pay a steep price for their powers. Uh, there's a few DC heroes who do too, but it's not considered core to the concept of the superhero so much as protecting people is, regardless of whether it involves suffering. But I think the way we use the term hero in day-to-day -day life, um, well, first of all, we overuse it massively. Uh, but I think when we're using it in a positive sense, what we really mean really is somebody who takes risks and puts themselves in harm way, harm's way. Um, obviously, that's very different from a traditional hero, because a traditional hero is actually the opposite. A traditional hero is someone whose, ha whose abilities are extraordinary to the point that what would be harm's way for other people is not for them. Uh, Superman actually has more in common with traditional heroes than uh, what this show is positing. But what this show is positing, I think, goes more in line with our cultural notion of what it means for someone to do something heroic. You know, like how bravery is only bravery if you are actually scared. If you just didn't notice the scary thing, or didn't comprehend that it was frightening, or it just isn't something that bothers you, then it's not really bravery, even if you, you know, step, step out to help someone. Uh, this is the same concept, I think. It's not really heroism unless it hurts. And that is an interesting take and one I'm curious to see more of going forward. Um, obviously, with all my writing about the concept of heroic trauma and how, like, for superheroes, heroism equals trauma, which is not quite the same thing as it equaling suffering, um, it's interesting, then, to see here a character who doesn't really have an origin trauma, but on the other hand, isn't really a superhero yet. He may yet have one. But there's plenty of types of heroes that don't. At the same time, this idea that self-sacrifice, that suffering is an essential part of heroism, does align with that. So I'm really interested to see where that goes going forward. So yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, no, it's actually not. The one other thing I wanted to say is um, there are two cases where I think it kind of overplayed its hand uh, in episode four. It was really obvious from the moment the giant thing turned out to be as big as it was and everybody was running from it, it was really obvious that saving someone else was going to be how he got the points. And they stretched that out way too long. Similarly, it was really obvious that he was going to get into the school. So the time between the end of the test and the end of the episode was also stretched out way too long. Like, there just wasn't any tension to sustain that, and instead it just became, let's look at this character being miserable because he doesn't know he's a character in a shonen show. Um... So, hoping there's less of that going forward. Uh, it's not a big misstep. It doesn't, you know, ruin the episode or anything, but it is a little bit of, you know, stretching a little too far, something that couldn't quite sustain the emotional heft they were putting on it, because it was a little too obvious where it was headed. Um, but yeah, now I think that's about it. Uh, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my Patreon for early access to vlogs, let's plays, essays, and more. And I'll see you all next time. Bye!